Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, I finally have a doll routine for y'all today. Um, everything basically takes me a while now because I have a baby. But um, this doll specifically took me a while because for some reason I did basically every step twice. Um, I just didn't like the first result, so I did it again. And it was a little miserable, but, but hey, let's talk about it. So, who is she? Um, when I was in high school, I don't think I talked about this on this channel, I was completely obsessed with anime. I like anime now, but when I was in high school, it was like very much a thing. So, I would watch literally whatever trash anime I could find. I did not discriminate. Okay, I had no standards. Well, actually, I did have standards because I like things more than other things. One of the things that I really liked was pretty much anything by Clamp. I loved Clamp. I loved the aesthetic of Clamp. I loved the stories of Clamp. Um, and I just really liked Clamp. And I specifically really liked Chobits. With all of that being said, we're making a Chi doll today. One of my passions in life <laughs> is buying random heads off of AliExpress and eBay. I love doing it, and I love putting them in this weird little bottle. So um, I figured, you know what, let's use one because they're really piling up. So I'm just showing you guys a couple of the random heads I have because they are my pride and joy. But the one that we're going to be using today is this one that I got off of AliExpress. Um, I got it, and it came with elf ears glued to its ears. Like, they were super glued, and I didn't really want to use them, so when I peeled them off, the super glue would not come off the ears. So I figured this would be great because we're going to be giving her those purse comm ears. Also, the face sculpt is just very pretty, so I figured it would lean very nicely into Chi. Um, I don't know what this face sculpt is. A lot of the time, I can identify them, but I don't know what this one is. So if you know what it is, let me know. The Ever After High Bodies are one of my favorite body sculpts. I just feel like they're very pretty. I also have a lot of them, so I figured I would use that for Chi. So let's make our Chi. The undertone of the head and the body are a little different, but I find once you start blushing it, this doesn't matter. I've got to take this Ever After High head off, so I'm warming it up with my blow dryer and yanking it off. To make it easier to put the head on, I'm cutting the neck peg down a little bit. I do really like this hybrid, but I find it has the issue that a lot of hybrids that I make with Ever After High bodies have is that the neck is a little bit long which at first bothered me, but when I consulted with my husband, he said that it actually sort of lends into her being a cyborg a little bit more, and I kind of agree because she has like almost inhuman but elegant proportions. On to the purse comm ears. So at first I made the ears with epoxy sculpt, but like I said, I made pretty much everything with this doll twice. Um, when I made them, like they looked fine, but they dried down a little weird. I think I didn't mix the two parts enough. Um, so it was like still squishy, so I was like, mm, and I ended up making them out of something different, but I made them in the same exact way. Um, so I still made them like this, but I made them with a different material, which you'll see later. On to the face up. So I spray the doll three times Mr. Super Clear, waiting 15 minutes between each spray and wearing a respirator mask. And we get to painting, or drawing I guess at this point. Um, I am drawing in the eyes. The eye mold I found was pretty, like a pretty good eye mold for Chi, so I just followed along with it. I made her have giant irises because Chi does. I color in the whites of the eyes with a white pencil. I also go over the irises as well. I find that this just makes the colors that I put down on the iris a little bit brighter. Probably wasn't super necessary because we're gonna be giving her brown eyes though. I blush basically uh, literally everywhere with <laughs> on her face with this light pink blush, put on the cheeks, the forehead, the nose, the chin. Uh, we love a good blush here. Honestly, no idea why I blush the ears. I think it's just like a compulsion of mine because I'm just so used to doing it. I gave her red lips with the pastel and cleaned it up with a kneaded eraser. And then I took that same red pastel and tapped that on the middle of her cheeks because we love a blush, okay? Or I love a blush. Honestly, I kind of wear my blush very similar to this. My blush is very intense and red when I do my makeup. I take brown next and I'm just shading around the eyes um, and the nose. I'm doing a more concentrated shading on the eyes where I just kind of tap it. And then for the nose, I'm taking a softer brush. In this 
case it's a paintbrush but it's sort of in a blending brush style where it's a bit softer and I'm shading inside the nostrils and on the sides of the nostrils. Girly Pop needs some veins because don't we all? <laughs> I'm doing those around the eyes. I'm just doing branch like pencil marks with my busted pencil and I'm doing some on the forehead and the jaw. I add blue pastel around her eyes and like her nose and her lips. This is going to act as an undertone once it's sprayed because her skin is pale. Onto the pretty gradient of cheese eyes, I am taking black and then a dark brown and then a lighter brown and I'm creating a gradient on her irises. To make those lips a little bit more defined, I'm taking a Q-tip and some red pastel. It's the same color that I did on the lips, but it's more concentrated, and I'm tapping that on the very middle of her upper and lower lip. I then start defining the shape a little bit more with a pink pencil. So I'm just bringing that Cupid's bow in and flicking some lines down for lip wrinkles. Since there was a lot of shading done, I have to bring back the highlights for the eyes. So I'm taking a white pencil and I'm just bringing lines of highlights around the eyes and the lips. I'm going to be emphasizing this even more with paint later. So she needs brows and she has extremely light blonde hair. It's like borderline white. So I'm gonna give her some blonde eyebrows, but they're a bit darker than her hair color. They're also straight and pretty thin. If you guys can't tell, this is the next day. Face up just take me a while now because of baby, but that's why the lighting's a bit different. I'm just using the good old sunshine, y'all. But this is where I'm gonna be adding in those highlights with paint. I'm not going over all of the pencil lines, but I'm just emphasizing some areas with paint. We gotta give those brows some hair, and I'm doing that with a brown. It's like a very light brown pencil. I feel like I made her eyebrows a little bit too thick, but you know what? I didn't choose the thick light. The thick light chose me. She, of course, needs some very sparkly macro prolix pigment all over her face because them's the vibes. Them's the vibes of all of my dolls though, so it's not just because she's a cyborg or whatever. I'm giving her very long lashes because I want her to look like, she doesn't really have lashes I think in the manga, but I want her to look like a doll, you know? Sort of like Mithrigan, but like <laughs> not as <laughs> creepy. I like emphasizing the outer lashes with some rose gold colored pencil. I'll just do a couple flicks. Cute, and then I'm adding even more hair to her eyebrows. Listen, they're getting a little thick, okay? But um, I'm holding myself back, I swear. <laughs> I do like the simple gradient of her eyes, but I wanted to add just a tiny bit more detail and add a ring of gold around the very bottom. To make her lashes stand out even more, I'm going over them with my black watercolor. In Chobits, she has a very specific highlight on her eyes, a white highlight, and I think it looks great in that like anime style, but when I tried to add it to my doll, I just think the style's a little bit, I don't know, my style isn't realistic, but I think it's just a little bit too, I guess, realistic for that type of highlight. Like, it just looks strange. I really dig the outcome of her eyes. I feel like she looks like a computer that's powering down. 
The very last little details that I add to this face up are rose gold highlights on the waterline and also white highlights on the waterline and also around the face. This is my Tamiya gloss, I'm putting that on her lips. This is how her face up turned out. I really like it. I feel like this is what I would imagine she to look like in my style. We have to add blushing around the body because I just think it looks strange without it. So I'm using the same tones that I used on her face on her body. Here she is, honestly, what a beauty queen. <laughs> I'm going to be doing her ears now, or I did them off camera. I remade them with Sculpey, white Sculpey. Just made my life so much easier. This is just by far the more superior method than using epoxy sculpt. And I didn't need to paint them white or anything, so I just painted the bottom pink, and I sprayed them off camera with a matte varnish. Here they are, they're so cute. It literally just occurred to me that they look like the old IMAX. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about if you're like a millennial, okay? But I'm super gluing them to her ears. And oh my god, she, she's coming to life. She got her little ears. Okay, so now onto hair. This hair was an absolute nightmare. I used first, <laughs> first hair I used was this wheat blonde from the Doll Planet. It's like, they have two different types of hair. This is this type. <laughs> the other one's called like high temp nylon, not that type. But we did also end up using that type, you'll see. I made wefts and then I glued them on her head from the bottom upward. When I started doing the bangs and the part, that's when this uh, just became a complete shit show. So <laughs> I wanted to glue this weft backwards and then dip it in the hot and cold water because this is low temperature nylon, um, just back and forth. And then I would flip the bangs forward and they would be, you know, folded in place. However, uh, this glue is not waterproof, so it just all melted. And then I was like, okay, I got plants. All right, so I have this weft and I kind of like pressed that down and didn't get any water on the glue, or at least I tried not to, um, but it wasn't like, that worked better, but the bangs weren't flat enough, so it just looks stupid. So I'd probably have to like re kind of dip them and then again, the glue is not waterproof, so it just dissolve. So what are we gonna do? Okay, I'm so determined. Um, this is Chi and her skullet, so cute. But um, I bought some the Doll Planet uh, High Temp Nylon. This is an Elsa. It's like kind of a different color, but it's like basically the same color. It's a little bit warmer. I took the hank and I cut it in half and we're gonna be making wefts with this. Now this is High Temp Nylon. Um, so we're gonna use heat tools on it and I'm using Fabri-Tac glue to make wefts because I can't remember if I looked up if Fabri-Tac glue is waterproof, but we're not using water anyway. Um, it's like heat proof, so it won't melt the glue when I start using tools on it, which is great because I'm so sick of glue and making hair wefts and this hairdo. So I made some wefts. This is actually like a pretty, like it worked out pretty well. Um, and I folded them, like I folded them and I took my straightener and I folded the weft and then I 
uh, squeezed it with my straightener and it trained it in place. Now I'm using the Fabri-Tac to glue the hair down because again, it's heat resistant and I figured I would probably be pushing this hair down or trying to get it flatter. Um, so honestly, the Fabri-Tac works pretty well. Like it's kind of a bop, okay? But I'm holding these in place because they're kind of heavy with some pins. When I was done, there was a little bit of a gap in her part and I didn't like that. So I actually also rooted some hair. I took the first nylon, the low temp nylon, and I rooted that into her part and then I just dipped it back and forth. Her head um, covered up with some saran wrap in the hot and then the cold water to make it so it would lay flat. So the hair was a nightmare and so were her little hair ornaments. <laughs> um, I made them three different ways. I made them with Warbla, it was too textured. Then I made them with Sculpey, uh, I don't know, they were just kind of weird looking and like thick. And then I was like, what am I doing? Why don't I make it with foam? So that's what I did. And this turned out like sort of okay. It was also significantly easier to do with foam. I just um, cut out some strips with pink and white and then I glued them onto her hair. I did make them a little bit like too fat, but I genuinely don't know how I would fit the amount of hair that she has in them if they are as small as they are in the manga. Okay, how? <laughs> like, I don't know. But this is how they turned out. Like, they're okay, okay? Definitely the best attempt. On to the dress. So this part was another nightmare. I love this dress from Chobits, but it is so above my pay grade. I am just not a good seamstress, okay? But I cut out the pattern to the best of my ability, and I am sewing, uh, the side things onto the middle piece and then the back piece. I'm sewing all that stuff in place. I also hemmed everything. I'm sewing some darts into the cups for her booba area. Would you look at that? Those are some nice booba cups. So I sewed the cups into place. I sewed some frilly lace onto the top of the dress. At this point, I was like, hey, this is looking pretty good, but it goes off the rails, <laughs> no worries. Um, I gather stitch the skirt. Now this dress is like shorter in the front and longer in the back. So that's how it's cut. Before we sew the skirt onto the top, I made some bows. So <laughs> I actually bought bows off of Etsy, but I got really um, impatient because <laughs> I'm kind of impatient. So I took a ribbon and I folded it and then I sewed the middle together and I wrapped a string around the middle so that it like cinched it and made it look like a bow. Honestly, they turned out pretty okay, um, so I sewed those in place. I sewed the top to the skirt, only at the front. I didn't do the sides yet. There's like gathered fabric on the side of the dress. I don't know what this is called. It's probably called something. So I made a pouch and I'm going to be gather stitching the top of it and it's going to create like a pulled together effect. I made two of these and I sewed them on the sides. onto the straps of her dress. So I needed like a smaller ribbon, but I didn't have one. So I just took this ribbon and I folded it in half and glued it in place. I then glued my frilly ribbon to that. 
and you have straps. Now, in Uno Memento, you're gonna realize that the dress is kind of different. So I am sewing the straps on, and yeah, I put the dress that I was making on, and it just looked, I don't know, it just didn't fit right. So I was like, I should make this out of like a stretchier fabric, even though I know for a fact that it's not the type of fabric that dress is made out of, but you know what? I don't know, it just, it just kind of fits her better, okay? So I remade it. The color is a little off from the dress, but like, I think it does the job, all right? Um, so I sew those straps into place. I made this dress in the same exact way that I made the other dress, and yeah, again, I was saying this is a nightmare. This whole doll is a nightmare, okay? Um, I glued some pearls onto my bows because I just didn't like like the middle thing. I probably could have just like wrapped some of the ribbon around it and it would have looked fine, but I don't know, I chose to put pearls, um, which is a bit different from the design. Now we're gonna do her little arm, what are the arm sleeves, things? Um, so more of this frilly, you know, frilly ribbon. Um, I sewed that on the top and the bottom and then I sewed a little tube. And those are her little arm things. So cute. All right, so I did the pink trim underneath the fabric and I was like, I don't like it. So I decided to redo it and put it on top of the fabric and I think it looks better. Again, that sucked though because I had to take apart the dress and I redo this part. Um, but she has like a big bow on the back of her dress and I have this tool. So I wanted to make the bow out of that. Um, I just folded the tool and then I wrapped the middle around and then I sewed it in place. And I also sewed another strip of the tool so that it had like two um, strips, you know? So it looked like it was a bow. And I sewed that into the back. All right, so here is how she is shaping up. <laughs> I think it looks okay. Um, I, all right, <laughs> so under skirt. This is the underskirt that she has. I don't know what's happening here. I don't know how to do this. Is it a circle skirt? I don't know, okay. So I'm just gonna be gather stitching some tool and sewing it to this ribbon. I did two layers of gather stitch tool. One was pink and then one is um, this white. And yeah, I don't know. I probably could have like executed it better because it really doesn't look like the underskirt at all. Um, but I don't know how to make that. So I put that underneath her dress now the Etsy bows that I ordered came in. I was like, these look better than my bows. <laughs> so I redid the bows because <laughs> I redid everything <laughs> on this freaking doll like 30 times. Um, but yeah, I took off my bows. I think my bows were like pretty good, honestly, but these bows are better. So I sewed those on. She doesn't have stockings on in this design. She honestly doesn't have anything on her like feet or legs but I thought that they would look nice, so I made her some stockings. I took a little bit of, well, I took quite a bit of artistic liberties, but I sewed these to her leg and then I flipped them. I thought about giving her shoes, but there was something, I don't know. I don't know if anybody else has like this vivid memory in their brain but there's something so cozy to me about wearing stockings in an extremely fancy dress with no shoes on. <laughs> it reminds me of like being at proms in high school and like after the prom when you would like go and hang out with people. I don't know guys, it's just a very specific kind of vivid memory in my head. Now, I would like to say, I know that this dress is not exact to the dress that I was trying to create, Maybe it's just like more so inspired. I also gave her a little bow on her, um, on her neck. It just felt like she needed something there. And eh, okay, I know that like for the type of dress that she's wearing and the design that I was trying to recreate, I should have used like a more flowy fabric so that I could have gotten all of those nice um, like gathers and stuff that were in the skirt. And I know I did not use the right fabric for that and I shouldn't have like put a ribbon at the bottom, but honestly the bottom was bothering me because like, I don't know, it just looked too unfinished. Um, I know that with those types of fabrics where they're more, you know, gathery and flowy, you need to heat seal them um, or heat hem them or whatever. I'm scared of fire, so I'm too scared to do it. But I need to just like suck it up and put on my big girl pants and do it so I can make better doll clothes. But that's my chi, guys. I hope you guys liked her. Um, I really like her even though her outfit didn't come out perfect. I think she came out 
pretty good, okay? Pretty okay. Um, so if you guys like Chobits, let me know uh, down in the comments. If you like Clamp, let me know. I like Clamp. Um, like this video if you like this video. Subscribe makes me happy. And I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Bye!